Hey everyone, welcome back to Grace Note Forge. So I've been using this homemade vacuum casting table for a little while now, and today I wanted to go over how I went about making it. So the basic idea behind a vacuum casting table is to use that negative pressure from the vacuum to help pull that molten metal down into all the fine details of the mold. And really, this can be done by just hooking a vacuum pump straight up to a table, but if there's ever a blowout or a crack in the mold, all that molten metal is just going to flow straight to the pump and destroy it. So to keep that from happening, my plan is to make a small chamber where that molten metal can fall into in the event of a blowout. That way the metal can then be retrieved. And these are the main supplies that I'm using for this build. And I'll leave a full list of the tools and materials down in the description. The JB Weld may not be needed, but more on that later. And for the vacuum pump itself, I'm actually going to be using the pump and hose setup that came with my 5 gallon vacuum chamber system. So to start things off, I know I'm going to have to weld this pipe later on, and before I do that, I'm going to have to get rid of this galvanized coating. So I'm going to use a small bath of muriatic acid for about 10 to 15 minutes to dissolve away that zinc coating, and get to the bare steel that's good for welding. Then it's placed in a bath of baking soda and distilled water to neutralize the acid left over on the pipe. Next, I'm going to drill a half inch hole in the center of this steel disc that I'm going to use as the top plate. And a high temperature silicone gasket will be placed in between to ensure a good seal for the flask. First, I marked off the center using a punch and then used a step drill bit marked off with a bit of tape until I reached a half inch. Next, I'm gonna cut off a few inches of the main pipe just to make the chamber a little shorter and so that I'm not having to weld right up against the threading later on. I also cut the smaller 4 inch long pipe in half to give me two equal sides. Then I cleaned up the ends of the pipes and ground a small chamfer going all the way around them to help make a good seam for welding. Next I'm going to mark off and drill two half inch holes in the main pipe to allow air to flow in and out through the valve and hose attachments. I'm going to mark them off at 2 inches from the ground end of the pipe, leaving me plenty of room to go around and weld on the top plate later on. Now after the two holes have been cleaned up, I can use a welding magnet to tack the two pipe ends in place and finish welding around the seam. Now I can line up the top plate and weld that in place as well. Now even though they're ugly, most of my welds look like they're holding up just fine but there is a clear gap in this little one inch section and as much as I'd like to blame it on my little Harbor Freight welder, really I just kind of suck at welding. Uh, so instead of redoing the welds, I'm just going to use some JB Weld to close up any small gaps that I find on these seams. Alright, next I'm going to make some legs for the table out of some eighth by half inch steel bar and I'm going to cut off four of them at six inches each. Then
Then I'm going to clean up the ends of the bars, rounding off the side that will be screwed to the workbench, and exposing some clean steel for the other side that'll be welded to the underside of the vacuum table. Then I'm going to drill some 1 8 holes on the rounded end of the bars for the mounting screws later on. Now I'm going to clamp the ends of the bars in my vise and bend over about a half inch section on either side. And I really just kind of eyeballed the angle, but it's just shy of 90 degrees, seems to work out well for the leg length. Now I can mark out where I want the legs to be so they don't interfere with the hose or the pipe fittings. And because I couldn't really hold them in place using a magnet, I'm using the hold fast on my anvil to help line them up while I tack them in place. And before I mount the whole system to my bench, I want to add a small pad of kale wool that I have left over from building my forge to the inside of that end cap. And this will hopefully help catch any of those precious metals that might fall in in the event of another blowout. And I'm also going to add a little homemade filter on the inside of that pipe coupler. And this is just made out of a small piece of sheet metal with some 16th inch holes drilled in it. And hopefully this will help stop any small bits of metal or debris before they make it to the pump. Now I can mark out where I want the whole system to be placed on my workbench and screw down the legs to make it nice and secure for casting. And just to improve the seal on the silicone gasket, I'm going to use a sander to smooth over the surface on the top of the table to get rid of any small imperfections that might interfere with the seal. Now I can hook up the pump and give it a quick test with an old spray can to see if the vacuum seal works. And I decided not to add a gauge to this vacuum table setup. Uh, just because during use, it's really easy to feel whether or not you have a good seal on the flask. And you can see right after placing it on top of the gasket, it should be really secure. So I don't think that I'll need a gauge, but of course I could easily add one in the future if I decide that I need one. So I've been using this vacuum casting setup for a while now. And it really works great for smaller castings with solid wall flasks. And I've been playing around with some ideas on how to make this setup work with larger perforated flasks as well. But that'll have to be for another project video. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.